Um, as I was saying, I was working on a project about using Islandora as a data repository. Um, this was an 18 month project that completed earlier this year. And this project was sponsored by Canary, which is a non for profit corporation that's mostly funded by the Canadian government. It does a number of things regarding research and data in Canada. Um, in particular, they support Research Data Canada. Um, and they are in the habit of funding software development um, in a way that increases the capacity of institutions like universities to create research software and also encourages collaboration between different universities. So the focus of this funding call was to um, help Canada have a national data services framework, like a robust infrastructure for universities to manage our research data and Islandora was one of the tools that can be used for this. Um, we also were instructed to implement the FAIR principles for scientific data management. Uh, these are best practices for creating good um, data repositories, and this means data should be findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable. So to that end, we wanted to deliver a configuration of Islandora that we called RDM defaults that can be used by other institutions to get started running our data repository. And we also wanted to migrate our and Simon Fraser's data repositories to Islandora 8. So the team was a collaboration between the University of Prince Edward Island and Simon Fraser University. Our team included Mark Jordan, myself, Noella McIntyre, Donald Moses, Alexander O'Neill, Alan Stanley, and Meng Yu Shang. And all of us did amazing work. So about our platform, this has already been linked to and talked about earlier today. Um, we have kind of a information site about the project. It doesn't, uh, it is not a demo installation, but it does include links to how to install it, um, and a number of documentation things, both like tutorials that are videos and thorough user and um, manager documentation books. They are calling them books. Noella wrote them. They are extremely long and thorough. So I highly recommend them. Okay, so what was our data repository? Well, we wanted any researcher to be able to log in deposit their data, well, first plan for their data, so make a data management plan, deposit their data, work on it, collaborate with other researchers in their departments or in other places, um, decide when and how to publish their data, and do that regardless of what their data is, so format or size. Um, then we wanted Islandora to give that a DOI, make it searchable, uh, provide rich metadata in a sta standard schema and link out to other external identifiers for the linked data aspect and to keep it safe so we know that preservation is happening. So here is a laundry list of features um, that we tackled in this project um, from generating citations, making DOIs, having workflows where a curator could ha would have to get involved before the um, information and or media would be published, um, making sure transmission fixity or fixity was fixity checks could happen both on the initial upload and ongoing in the repository. Um, we wanted large files to be able to be uploaded. Apologies. Um, that's probably the plumber. Um, Event logging, so that we had something kind of like an audit data stream, keeping track of when things were changed and by who. Storing files on Amazon or other large um, storage systems. Implementing alt metrics, logging in with ORCID, doing text extraction and OCR of PDFs, uh, outputting our metadata as XML, that was part of the DOI generation. Oh, and we wanted to be able to visual, visualize data, so we developed a CSV viewer. Um, we set up user dashboards, uh, fields that do external lookups. We wanted to be able to share content between different Drupal owners so that while it's unpublished, multiple people could work on it and keep track of usage stats. 
um, have the ability to download a bag, be friendly for Google search, um, comply with GDPR, create our own custom content types, and have a playbook to make this all happen. So the big question that we had to tackle with this was if we're not using Islandora defaults, because a lot of the things that Islandora defaults provided, the content types, the fields, um, the views, the um, weren't what we wanted to have. So we ended up developing our own custom mod um, module that replaced Islandora defaults with our own versions of defaults. But it still kind of raised the question of, are we really deviating from Islandora? Uh, I asked it in the opposite way. No, we're not deviating. Yes, it is Islandora. Really interestingly, the last presentation um, had a lot in common with our project. It seems like once we're using Drupal, the way to do these kinds of things becomes really obvious. So when it's the Islandora way, um, it is the Drupal way. So we provided a module called Islandora RDM for research data management. And it's a module that you can install and involves a number of sub-modules, a lot of which are features, features in the Drupal sense. Um, but in doing this, we realized that Drupals are like ogres in that they're also like onions in that they have a lot of layers. And a lot of our features, our config entities that we packaged with this, um, this module in order to kind of make it work out of the box, um, they really relied on having all the other things in place. For example, to do something with a certain content type, you had to already have that content type installed. Um, the Islandora way from seven that we wanted to try to replicate was where you could spin something up out of the box, it's got stuff set up and you didn't really have to go in and set it up to work the way you wanted it. It would kind of work in a sensible way. The Drupal way seems to be having a lot more uh, standalone example modules rather than a configurable default. So if you look at something like the migrate module, um, I know for a while they had the sample migrations, which included wine and beer. Those aren't meant to actually be used in your production, but it's an example that shows you how the things work and all, how they all fit together that you have to learn in order to implement it yourself. So one of our main um, products of the um, project was this kind of multi-file media mod um, option model that's been, that's been mentioned a few times. So here's a diagram showing how it works. Um, the standard Islandora way uh, using a compound object, or sorry, the standard Islandora way so far has been that each file that Drupal knows about is represented by its own media. So I'm going from the bottom up. The files are the squares, uh, the media are the blue rectangles. And that means that if you have an original file and two derivatives, you have three different media. And if you have that for three different original files, such as a data set that comes in three parts, um, you would need to have nodes for each of those files, as well as Kind of a parent node for the whole data set. And because we wanted researchers, so people who weren't in the library, weren't really trained in Islandora to be able to log in and do this themselves, we changed that into um, the one on the right, so the multi-file media module, in which one media can contain multiple files. So in Drupal land, when you set up a media entity. Um, it's based on one particular storage um, field. And in most cases, that's like a file upload field. Um, so like for images, it will that field will accept image types. Um, for the video type, it accepts video types. Um, but media are fieldable as well. So not only can you store metadata on media, 
um, as we've all seen, if you've tried to set up an object in Islandora, um, as soon as you've entered your metadata in the node, you create a media. And again, you have to say, well, what's the title of this media? It's probably the same as what you entered in the node. And there's a number of other fields that you might need to populate. Um, but you can also add file fields to media that aren't the main storage field. And that is what we used to store all of our derivatives. Um, so particularly our extracted texts, um, our FITS metadata as an XML file. Um, so bundling those within one single media allowed it to be faster for the user um, to enter their data as well as um, easier for the site manager to manage when you go into say the list of content or the list of media. Um, on the one on the left, you would see nine different media for this one data set. Um, and for the one on the right, you would only see three. Um, so I threw some screenshots in here just because um, of the amazing stuff that I just saw from Discovery Garden's presentation. Um, we also have a multi-page um, entry form. So this is the very complex um, data set content type that we created. Um, and it includes nested um, fields. Um, so this is a creator. You can create a creator who is a person oops, or a organization. And each of those could have uh, zero or more identifiers. And those identifiers can have different types. Um, and we modeled all of this using paragraphs. Uh, we also have um, uh, underneath creator was contributor. And so there's also a contributor type. So it, just like everyone else, we had to add types to relationships. Um, and this is the default view. We didn't have a lot of time to work on the theme. So this is just the basic out of the box. Um, this view, which shows the files, is actually showing a list of all the um, attached media. So if we had multiple original files, it would show the multiple um, PDFs here. And on the right hand side is our citation. Um, you can see it generated a citation for this data set. Um, you can create a bag with that create archive button um, and export the metadata in various formats. So I don't have a lot of time, but a few things that I wanted to run through were how we implemented some of these. And most of them were just using standard Drupal modules. So to get our editorial workflows, we set up the content moderation module. Um, in Drupal, there is a workflow module, but it just provides the basic framework and content moderation is what makes it work with the nodes and the media that we needed. Um, so it allows you to define different states, define trans transitions between different states and allows you to specify or give permission to certain Drupal roles, the ability to do each transition. Um, to implement that sharing of content, we use the workflow participants module. However, um, as we were doing this, we did notice that there were a few things that we weren't expecting, um, especially with access control. So with workflow and workflow participants, um, sometimes what we thought was a sensible list of permissions to give to a researcher actually allowed them to see somebody else's nodes that they weren't allowed to see, not directly at slash node slash mid, but by accessing that content through different ways, because Drupal has a lot of different ways that um, it can display the content. So if you have it in a view, um, that might be made visible to the wrong people. Um, as well, we, did, we, had, we wanted to uh, ensure that we could do revisioning. And it turns out that if you can view revisions, then you can view revisions for everything. Um, uh, as mentioned before, we needed to do lookups to external identifiers. And so we created the linked data lookup field, uh, formerly LC subject field. Um, this is a framework to search any external search API. Uh, it uses plugins, so you can do different types. And it currently comes with three configurations installed to search the Library of Congress subject headings, uh, GRID, and the Australian New Zealand research classifications. Um, to find more about this module, Alexander did a presentation about it from in the metadata um, event. And it stores 
two fields uh, or a double field. So this, this one field contains a human readable value and also a URI. Um, so we were very, we wanted to make sure that when people uploaded their data and did not share it, that it was not shared. Um, however, we encountered some gotchas when we tried to implement this security thing later in the game. Um, so to make, we had to make some trade-offs to keep something unpublished um, because we didn't have a configuration to do it yet in Fedora, we had to upload the files into the Drupal private file system. And that isn't super scalable, um, which is why we don't tend to use that uh, in out of the box Islandora right now. So there is work to be done to figure out how to make this um, respect permissions, but also be able to do things you know, fast and at scale. Um, Matomo and Repo Matomo reports. Again, these are just standard Drupal, ob Drupal modules, um, but when we tried to use them, we realized it doesn't really know what an Islandora object is. Um, so to get the kinds of um, statistics that you might need, Matomo is a statistics generating um, modules or system similar to Google Analytics. Um, you might have to configure some custom dimensions to do that. Um, I'm running out of time. We implemented GDPR. It's a checklist, but just checking off the checklist doesn't mean you're doing GDPR. Um, so integration tests are super important. We had modules that worked together, but in unexpected ways. Um, it really, really benefited us to understand the contrib modules that we were using fully and understanding the framework that they were built under. So whereas, you know, Drupal is about building websites, um, it's not meant to be GitHub, which is kind of what we imagined when like people can log in and make their own collections of things. Um, so the, the framework was very different. Modules, you know, we had to kind of jump through hoops to make them work in the way that we wanted them to. Um, for example, you could see stuff that we thought you shouldn't be able to see. Um, so some kind of trait takeaways, but this is a tool. So understand how it works and use it as a tool. It's not going to be the solution, uh, but it might help you get there. Content modeling and design work is a whole separate thing. Took us way longer than we thought. Um, and doing things like workflows and GDPR means a lot more than just configuring a system that comes out of the box with this stuff. It means having the policies at your institution to actually make these, these things happen. Uh, and lastly, of course, it's free as in puppies. Um, it's cute, but if you hang out with them too much, suddenly you've adopted them. They get big really fast and sometimes they bite your ankles. All right, thank you. Sorry for going over time. <laughs>